My name is Ford Seuss. I'm 36 years old and I'm starting over. My previous adventure was outward, living my dream of discovering India and sharing it with the world. But this new adventure is inward, facing my lifelong struggle with depression and finding renewed purpose. Join me on this new journey of self-discovery and personal reinvention, building a better me. My dad just overdosed, so I'm called the ambulance and the fire department's here and cops are here. It's a recipe for disaster. They're gonna bait or act him and he can't resist and he doesn't have the physical ability to. I just want you to understand that uh, you don't understand depression. They don't understand, you know, it's impossible to explain it. And it's gonna, depression is what's gonna kill my dad. People are dying all over our world. It's an epidemic that's happening right under our noses. But it's not a silent killer. We raise awareness on social media when big name casualties hit the news and we all acknowledge there's a problem. We pour out sympathy, bemoan the perceived indifference to this epidemic, but it keeps happening. And we keep coming back to these questions. Why do people commit suicide? Why do people overdose? Why do depression, mental and emotional imbalance, and addiction drive people over the edge? For all the well-meaning and I would say genuine outpouring of concern about this epidemic when high-profile cases come to light, I don't think it goes deep enough. Because depression, addiction, and emotional and mental health are not easy for family or friends to deal with. Ultimately, every single one of us who deals with any of the above maladies must find a solution that is better than sympathy or codependent enabling. We must vanquish our foe, because whether you believe in the supernatural or not, your depression, your addiction, your emotional and mental health malaise is out to kill you. It will accept no substitutes. It will knock on your door every day. A pat answer will not do. A sympathetic ear is not enough. We have to fight this enemy with every tool we can muster. That's the purpose of this series, to try to find real ways to combat depression and mental illness from the ground up. This isn't a tutorial written by someone who's finished his journey. This is a frontline dispatch from a soldier who's tired of seeing his heroes die. So join me down here in the trenches as I seek to discover a disciplined method against the madness, building a better me. My dad did make it. He rallied back, fought through. Uh, he's still with us. Uh, to really understand where my dad is coming from, it does help to understand what dad has been through and kind of what set the tone for his life. And one story in particular really did, and it was when he contracted polio at a very young age. And so this is his story about that. It's a pretty horrifying story, and I think you can kind of think through just the psychological implications of what this could do to somebody, how it kind of set the tone for his life. Yeah, when I was three, I contracted polio. My mother and father brought me to Knoxville. They had a ward that they could put people uh, with contractable diseases. And they had bars on a window. I remember standing on the bed, holding onto the bars, talking to my mom and them, and asking them why they were leaving me here, why they brought me here, and why couldn't I go with them? You know, they tried to explain it to me. I thought they left. My sister has recently told me that my mother was there every day. My dad had to go to work. I was only there a few weeks, and the doctor said my muscles were gonna be a problem most of my life. They were driving me home from Knoxville, which is about an hour's drive. My dad started getting weak. My mother told me that right before I went to the penitentiary the last time, that I leaned up on the back of the seats and said, I'll never go anywhere with y'all again. And, you know, that just like to broke my dad's heart. But he was getting weak, and he, he told my mama, so he, he pulled over to the side of the road. My mother went around the car, had to literally push his, push his body over to the passenger side. She drove us home. My mama called the doctor and told her that, you know, he couldn't move. So they sent an ambulance. Uh, they came, loaded him up, took him to Knoxville, and put him in an iron lung, and he was dead in 24 hours. You know, my mother, you know, this time we were talking later, you know, she said she, she held me responsible that daddy probably got it from me. One of the things I think that's very difficult in our world is to accept the personal responsibility for our actions in a world that's 
seems unfair. And for my dad, even though, you know, born into a pretty well-off family, white in America, in terms of like the privilege game, like that's pretty high up. But the fact that he contracted polio and his dad died also from polio, it, it was a psychological damage that dad never was able to really rebound from until later on in life. And he still deals with the repercussions of, of the situation, you know. Dad didn't have someone to blame in his case. I mean, he could blame God or fate, uh, but it wasn't like there was some systemic injustice in place that that caused this problem. But Dad still fought back against the system, and you know he's been a wild maverick of a man most of his life, and he never encouraged such an attitude in me. Although I have been kind of a, a difficult person to work with, a difficult difficult person to get to fit in. But at a certain point, you know, when things get bad, you just have to say, what can I do about it? And what can I change about my life to make things better for me and for those around me? And not just in a greedy, self-interested sense, but in, in a way to make the world a better place too. So that's what this show is about. You know, we came back to from India, our dream of living in India, to help out with my family, help out with my dad. And, you know, we've been here, so that's been good and just being around has been helpful but i wanted to do something more than just be in the same house more than just taking my dad to doctor's offices and things like that like what could we do so one of the ideas i had was to get the three generations me my dad and my son and just get out of the house and away from all this electronic stimulation and try to you know reconnect with nature but it was something that me and dad would do from the time that i was young we'd go out and we'd look at insects I loved insects, arachnids, reptiles, and amphibians. Those were my thing as a kid. And so it seemed like it would be good. My son has this fascination with Pokemon, like a lot of kids his age. And so we were like, well, we're going to go find real-world Pokemon. So that was one of our first steps in trying to build a better us as a family. And But just the discipline of getting out and uh, taking some time to think and feel the wind against your face and feel the sun. <laughs> It seems simple, but I think that in our technologically saturated age, it's very easy to forget to do something so simple. Well, it's too, it's too late for the butterfly. He's, the butterfly is dying. Because the praying mantis is eating him. You want me to get the praying mantis? Hi, new Pokemon. How are you doing? So, what do you think of the praying mantis? It's good. It's a good Pokemon. It's kind of scary. It's yes. eating that eating that poor butterfly. Yeah. How sad. I would have protect it. Well, sometimes you. Yeah, sometimes you have to let nature do its thing. It has a weird face. It's like in its own self. <laughs> yeah. Idea they're that fast. No, I didn't either. I know it's just a fast. magnificent creature. Yeah, I know they're very fast. <laughs> oh, freaked him out. That turned upside down. No, don't trap him. I'm not trapping him. No, let him to be alone. All right, you want me to let him go? Yeah, let him be alone and put him on the grass. All right, we'll let him go. So for us, our first uh, three-generation real-world Pokemon hunt was a success. A lot of people, even who have never surfed before or aren't that familiar with surfing, are familiar with the term wipeout. So a wipeout is when a surfer falls on a wave. Pretty simple. But what happens to the surfer is not so simple. It can be easy, actually. You can fall and you end up getting go down deep enough, and then you just come right out the back on the other side of the wave. Uh, but a lot of times what happens is you get tumbled by the wave. If anyone's been in a river and fallen off their raft, it's kind of a similar experience and it's extremely disorienting. If you get 
turned over by a wave and you get flipped around, there's sometimes we don't even know which way is up. For a lot of us who struggle with depression, that's how we feel. We feel like we're in a fog and we can't tell which way is north, south, east, or way, west, how to get back home. We don't even know what home is anymore. You're in home, but it doesn't feel like home. You feel like you're underwater and you're tumbling around and you're struggling to catch breath. And to know where to start in a situation like this is is hard. It's, it's hard for anyone, uh, wherever they are in the world. So, so you have to start somewhere. So for us, starting out with something simple, just getting the three generations together, seemed like a good place to start. So what I kind of envision building a better me looking like by the end of 2018 is something about what this video looks like. What I'd like to do, uh, where American Indian actually started from, it started as a vlog, just a very simple vlog. It wasn't really well edited. I didn't write anything. It was just our experiences in life in India. And then gradually over time, I started writing little snippets, uh, kind of like this one. Monsoon season has been in full swing in North India, which means drenched rickshaw rides, fresh potholes on newly rutted roads, and in some unfortunate areas, serious and potentially devastating flooding. But it also means the calming sound and cooling refreshment of morning rains. In their wake, the rain clouds have left behind crisper air, at least on this particular day, and a howling wind that is readily welcomed after a boiling hot North Indian summer. I don't know if you can quite say fall is here yet, as fall only gets the slightest lip service thanks to local weather patterns, but as the year moves along from September into October, you can almost hear a collective sigh of relief. That was one of the first times I wrote something out and made a little you know, musical interlude and then put some imagery over it. That kind of paved the way for what American Indian would look like one day. So there was a time I met somebody, Kunzum Travel Cafe, actually. Uh huh. They asked if I wanted to show something. I was like, well, I don't really know. I was like, you got a, you got a film? You want to show a film? I'm like, I don't have a film. And they were like, man, I really like your videos. I was like, oh, okay. And so I, and by that time, we'd had more crafted versions of, you know, some of these vlogs. And so I, uh, Sliced assembled them, them up. together. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we had like 20 hours of vlog footage and, <laughs> I cut it down into an hour and a half movie. So we had a feature film. We premiered it at Kunzun Travel Cafe. We actually sold it online. You know, we made a little bit of... I forgot about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's great. It's good to walk down memory lane. Yeah. I forgot Kunzun. Yeah. So thanks to Kunzun. I know. I, thanks to them, you have American Indian. Yeah. We created a movie. And from that movie, I was doing a little cross-country trip across the USA. Uh, and all of a sudden, one day, I was like, why don't I just take that American Indian concept and turn it into a web series. And so that's how we started. It started off less polished. It was a weekly show that was still not really that's crafted. Right, yeah. and that it was, was more of a vlog. Yeah, yeah, you were. And then... It was crafted. It was. You did. You wrote segments for that. I did. And shot B-roll for that. Yeah. So, and he was doing that all on his own. Yeah. I was just, I don't know what I was doing, not helping. And then eventually we got to the point where we made it into a monthly show and then it got just, it got too big. It got to be about 30 minute long and it was... I still have pages of ideas for the <laughs> Maybe. oh too big show. We are starting with Building a Better Me in 2018 a bit simpler. It's Every episode is not going to look like what you saw today. Uh, it's mostly going to have this as the basis. And then anything we vlog or uh, stuff that I write, I, I plan to... Uh, kind of do what we did with American Indian. Uh, I'll put together like a feature film worth of content from this year. So segments like that one segment that I really like about depression um, that take a lot more work and a lot more thought. Um, but we want to start off with conversation that's crowdsourced. Uh, that's why we've created these subreddits. We've got the Building a Better Me subreddit. We've already got a great post from one of our viewers there that I uh, want to explore. You're, what you're seeing is the DVD special features from the beginning here. <laughs> and we're going to get to the feature, feature. film. Uh, and in the meantime, you're going to see more of the director's cut as we go along. Some of the stuff won't make it into the final cut. The final cut hopefully will be about an hour and a half and uh, by the end of 2018. And then after that, uh, maybe we can, you know. And we'll see. We'll see. You know, maybe we, we'll just we take make it, it a into a, a, time. a American Indian style web series. Uh, if you're interested in supporting this show and this channel, uh, you're not just supporting Building a Better Me, the Friday video. You're supporting uh, a weekly live show we're gonna do on Twitch. We're gonna start our first one this Sunday. So 
8 a.m. Central Time U.S. Mm -hmm. on Sunday morning, which will be 7.30 p.m. Indian Time. So if you want to tune into that, uh, we'll put the link in the description, twitch.tv slash the surfing violinist. And, you know, what kind of that, that one's going to be interesting. It's first time I've streamed in a while, so we'll kind of learn it together. Patrons will have uh, access to a Discord chat where they can, you know, get kind of first priority in terms of what you want to talk about. Uh, but we'll go through three phases of that Twitch stream. The Creator's Corner section where we talk about film, music, art, all these kind of things from America to India and beyond. And then the India Connection, which will be kind of what we've been doing weekly, our main flagship video these last couple of months. We'll have kind of those cross-cultural conversations. And then the uh, last section will be Building a Better Me, talking about life changes, dealing with depression, then I'm going to chop that Twitch stream live show into three shorter videos for people who can't make it to the Twitch stream um, or who aren't interested in sitting through the whole thing. You know, it's not going to be real polished. It's just going to be us having a conversation mm -hmm. and we'll take it as it goes. Uh, but we've gotten a lot of great feedback over the years from viewers that have just totally given us another perspective. I, I just love what Hemant said, Hemant Pandit said about truth unfolding, you know, in, in Hinduism, that this is as opposed to like a rigid understanding of doctrines or beliefs. It's a trying to unravel truth in a more poetic, um, almost musical fashion. That's kind of what we're looking to do in 2018 with our creative output, using this talk show kind of as a means to get to that. So you're going to see a truth unfolding, uh, building a better me unfolding in 2018. We're excited. If you want to support the show, you can sign up at thesurfingviolinist.com, uh, which will lead, us, lead you to our Patreon page link is in the description below whatever final work comes out of this whatever you will have access to all of that okay so uh, i don't even care how much you give i'm not going to do a tier if you do have a dollar a month whatever i'm going to give you the thing tune in sunday 8 a.m central standard time 7 30 p.m india standard time for the first twitch broadcast live show of the surfing violinist weekly here we go what are Trying we going to call something it new we're just gonna call it the Surfing Violence Weekly. We'll Building work. a better me stream. Building a better stream. Ooh. And if you don't catch us, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll be putting those videos, those seg seg we'll segments, we'll be uploading segments onto YouTube. Monday, Wednesday. Friday. Creative for Monday, cross cultural for Wednesday, and constructive for Friday. So until then, keep it creative, cross cultural, and constructive. Thank you very much.